Small fly, big impact. Part two, making research fly. Drosophila melanogaster, known more commonly as the fruit fly or vinegar fly. This fly has been used in biological research for over a century and is the insect behind an impressive five Nobel Prizes in physiology and medicine to date. But what contribution could this tiny fly possibly make to medicine? The answer lies in our shared evolutionary roots. We still have many genes in common with Drosophila, and an astonishing 75% of human disease genes have equivalents in flies. Since research in flies is fast, cheap, and amenable to many different experimental approaches, they can be used as efficient models to help understand how these genes work in health and disease. As an example, let's take a look at an important gene that was first discovered and understood in the fly before equivalent genes with similar functions were found in higher animals and humans, eventually leading to the development of a cancer-fighting drug. Our story begins with Nobel Prize winning research that started in the 70s. These studies investigated the genetic mechanisms behind how a seemingly uniform egg cell develops into a complex and well-structured fruit fly embryo. To do this, they fed flies cancerous substances known to cause genetic mutations. They then selected the eggs that inherited these mutations and developed into malformed embryos. The researchers generated an intriguing horror cabinet of mutants, some with duplicated heads and tails, and some missing entire body parts. Amongst them was an unusually spiky embryo, which they appropriately named Hedgehog. Normally, spiked cells have to develop in bands that help the maggot crawl forward. But in Hedgehog mutant embryos, spiked cells pop up everywhere. They identified the gene affected by the mutation and named it the hedgehog gene. The next step was to work out how it functions in controlling the development of the banded pattern in healthy embryos. Thanks to the ease of experimentation in flies, it was then revealed that the healthy hedgehog gene produces and releases a signal at the border between spiked and naked cells, directing cells on either side to take on their distinct appearances. But hedgehog's function is not unique to the embryo and also acts at later stages, for example, in the developing wing, where hedgehog is produced in the back half and makes these cells distinct from the front half. But in experiments where hedgehog is artificially expressed in the front half, it results in a striking aberration. The wing grows a smaller side wing. But what exactly does all of this have to do with us? After all, we don't even have wings. Well, the wing aberration we see in flies helps explain what we see when people have extra fingers or toes, a condition known as polydactyly. In humans, one important gene involved is called sonic hedgehog, a direct relative of Drosophila's hedgehog. And the way it works in humans is astonishingly similar. In the developing limb, sonic hedgehog is also made in the back, giving cells in that region their identity. But if a mutation causes it to be expressed in the front, additional thumbs arise. This phenomenon occurs through the same kind of mechanisms that were first studied and understood in fly wings. The story of hedgehog doesn't end here. Work on hedgehog turned out to be relevant to cancer where abnormal hedgehog function causes cells to become different from their neighbours and divide uncontrollably. This finding sparked a quest for drug treatments, aiming to tone down hedgehog activity in cancer. One of the resulting drugs is now used to treat a type of skin cancer and has been dubbed the greatest advance in therapy yet seen for this disease providing an alternative to radiotherapy and surgical treatments. The impact of Drosophila extends well beyond cancer, and flies are being used as efficient and cost-effective models to advance research in many areas. 
For example, to understand stem cells, sleep, jet lag, addiction, learning and memory, aging and age-related diseases, including Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, and even NASA is sending flies into space as model astronauts. In this way, Drosophila remains an important pillar in the process of scientific discovery. It continues to spearhead new research trends and is a constant generator of ideas and conceptual understanding. Want to hear about how the fly came to be such an important model? See part one of this series, Why the Fly?